So hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Leading Leader Summit, where we are talking about actionable strategies to transform yourself, your teams, and your organization from the inside out. And I'm so excited to bring the amazing Angela Mazzi back again for the fourth year in a row. You've been here for every single summit, Angela. So yay. I so appreciate your contribution, your presence, and sharing all of your wisdom and knowledge with us every year. So Angela, welcome back. Oh, thank you so much, Sarah. This is such an amazing and valuable event that you put on every year. And I really hope everyone goes back through the archives too, because there's mm -hmm. just so many great people and wisdom and resources that are shared. So I'm just always honored to be a part of it. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate that. And so, yes, it, it, it has been a collection over the years now, hasn't it? And just like your podcast, you know, you've been interviewing people for, for years now, which is amazing. Uh, so for those of you that don't know Angela, um, or maybe you saw her last year, but you want to have a reconnection, uh, Angela is joining us from Cincinnati, Ohio in the United States. And she's going to be talking to us today about making hard talks easy. And I think that is something that we can always learn and deepen our abilities to handle challenging conversations. So I can't wait to dive into that with you. Uh, but first, I just want to quickly introduce you, Angela, and then we'll get right into it. So Angela is the founder of Architecting, a career-centered community where you define success on your own terms, co-create with clients and your teams with strategies that foster well-being. With leadership experience in corporate, nonprofit, and government sectors, Angela can help you have an impact without it fighting and struggling for every win. Oh, that sounds amazing. So let's hear more about how you want to uh, encourage us to make hard talks easy today, Angela. Sure. So this is a topic really near and dear to my heart. Um, work these days is more and more team-based and we're really seeing a seismic shift from a competitive workplace to a collaborative workplace. Now, this is nothing new. We've been talking about this for a while, but it's easier said than done because the minute we start to form teams, we can bump into a lot of friction. People may not be meeting expectations. People may not get along with one another. There may be performance issues. And inevitably, as a leader, you need to be able to handle conflict in a way that's not going to alienate people, but that's mm -hmm. going to bring out the best in everybody and hopefully lead to productive conversations, not a buildup of resentment. That's huge. And I think it's so easy to, I, I'm guilty of it myself, to just leave things unaddressed, which is even worse. Uh, so you're uh, having the idea, like you're saying, to really help address these things. So when we are collaborating, we can do it openly and cleanly without all of this extra buildup, things that aren't resolved. Yeah. And, you know, as you know, Sarah, a lot of my work deals specifically with well-being and how to cultivate mm -hmm. that, which means, of course, I have done a real deep dive into the topic of stress. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. at its root, stress is a safety response. And there's fear that triggers the stress response. And I really want to challenge everyone to think about work situations, especially some challenging ones you may have experienced or maybe something you're going through now. And to think about behavior that either maybe you had or others had and how it might have been based on fear. And that's something mm -hmm. we don't often do, right? And mm -hmm. when we do that, we can see that maybe somebody was performing poorly because they had fear of asking a question and looking bad, mm -hmm. or maybe they were not speaking up in meetings because they had fear of another team member who would challenge them. And that made them mm -hmm. feel scared, or they had fear of doing something new because maybe they wouldn't be good at it. And, you know, you can just kind of play through that quite a bit, how almost all performance issues or behavior issues come at the root cause from some kind of fear. 
So what's mm. the antidote to that? It's to create psychological safety for your teams, which means that people are comfortable with vulnerability. Mm. And when we don't create psychological safety, then we can create a lot of behaviors that don't have to happen or let things go further. And when you look at it that way, it doesn't feel as scary then to mm. have to address the problem because instead of saying, eh, we got an issue here, which of course is now another confrontation, which is gonna trigger right. another fear-based response, we can come at it from a different place. I love that. And so instead of like you're saying, <clears throat> somebody looking to a, approach a difficult conversation or an issue is now creating a problem in even just perceiving it that way. And so what I'm hearing you say is encouraging us to look at it as this, this behavior probably came from fear of some kind. And I think that really feels like it would open up compassion instead of dealing with a problem, which sounds like a totally different energy that you'd entered into the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And mm -hmm. I there's really three components to this. So the first one is what we're just saying, have empathy. So number one, assume positive intent, which is challenging, mm -hmm. more challenging than you think sometimes. But people don't usually set out to say, I just want to be mediocre or I want to make mistakes, right? They're, they're coming True. at it, mm -hmm. trying to do the right thing. Be transparent. So even though sometimes confidentiality is important, we also need to make sure that we are explaining enough. I mean, I personally have had issues where my supervisor told me early in my career, I'm hearing or people say, that this is a problem. Well, mm. because he was being so vague, I didn't know what the situation actually was that apparently caused a problem. So I didn't know okay. what I mm -hmm. did. So and, it's just some know, sort of vague issue that isn't really right. a, and given any context specifically. Right. So mm -hmm. that can lead to a real productive conversation. So Mm -hmm. If you do need to bring up a specific incident, you have to provide enough details that the person can understand what they did wrong or to give their side of the story. Because mm -hmm. sometimes other people will triangulate issues to their benefit as well, especially if maybe you said something to them or they're worried that their performance looks bad. It's really easy to bring up somebody else and deflect. So you really need to understand all the issues and give the person that chance. So think about how you can share enough details that you can have that better conversation. Mm -hmm. And above all else, make sure that the person feels seen and heard. Even yes. if you're delivering okay. bad news, it goes over much better when the person feels like you understand why they did what they did. Right. So they they aren't um, necessarily just told what you did was wrong and that's that's enough of the conversation. We're actually sharing information so they understand the context. And then the next sounds like the next point is seeing and hearing them, giving them an opportunity to share their perspective on that. Yeah. I mean, a reason is different than an excuse. And we just need to understand that, again, if we're going to have a positive conversation about doing better. And then also ask them if they maybe have some personal factors. Like we know that stress can affect performance. Maybe they have a new baby and they're not getting enough sleep or a sick parent. Mm -hmm. Because all of that can make someone less creative, have a shorter temper, be grumpy. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's not even that the person doesn't have the capability, but there may be life circumstances that we want to understand so we can direct that person to support. That's lovely. And it, it feels just so cared about as you're describing this, really, so that we're supporting our the human people that we're working with and all of their, you know, their personal and their professional situation. And we go back to what you talked about at the beginning to assume positive intent. But where's the barriers or what's coming up that's maybe uh, creating the problem? Right. So the second 
point I really want to make, and we touched on this earlier, is really creating that culture of teamwork. Because mm -hmm. when we feel supported, when we feel like we have resources, we're more likely to lean on them rather than struggle on our own and potentially make a mistake. Mm -hmm. So, Good point. you know, help people fail forward and see how to learn from failure and course correct. Uh, we talk a lot at my firm about fail early, fail often, because mm -hmm. then the mistakes are not cataclysmic mistakes they're just little things and you could fix them so create that feeling that it's okay to make a mistake but we have to learn from it mm -hmm. and also accept people as they are so we <laughs> love as leaders to grow our team and sometimes we may be putting pressure on someone who doesn't really want to grow Maybe ah, they yes. like <laughs> being just that solid go-to person in this one focused area in they're happy to do that their whole career. So Angela, I really appreciate how you talk about accepting people where they are. And I know for me and yourself and others, probably in this, in the summit, many people are, you know, achievement oriented and career progression oriented, but not everyone is like you said. And so being understanding what, what each individual person wants and needs for their career and uh, their development is really important. I think I agree completely. Yeah, and some things people just want to put on pause and maybe let their kids get a little bit older or mm -hmm. get through a life phase situation. And especially with the younger generation where quality of life is more important than career milestones, Mm -hmm. It's really important to tap into that because I have myself with all the best intentions made the mistake of putting too much pressure on people, even when they said they wanted a certain goal and it really backfired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good thing to keep in mind for sure. So to really tuning into the people and, and where they're at and what's working for them at that point makes a lot of sense. And then bringing that into the hard talks, making hard talks easy, I think is even more important uh, understanding what their motivations are would make a big difference. Yeah, which feeds perfectly into the very last important thing to know when you're having a hard talk is to resist what I call the anger, guilt, and shame spiral. Oh, wow. And we've all experienced this, right? Where we feel made wrong about our mistakes. So when you need to have a hard talk, you need to be very, very aware of how easy it is to shame somebody by calling out a problem mm. or to make them think either you are angry with them or to make them angry at you because they're indignant that you feel that way mm. or just to create a lot of guilt about what have, should have, could have kind of scenarios. So my advice for that is be grateful. So start off by thanking them mm -hmm. for what they're doing well. And don't just offer platitudes. Say some really specific things, maybe give some examples from recent things that have happened, maybe in a meeting they did something really good or they developed a really great idea or showed some initiative so that they can see that you genuinely appreciate their strengths. So don't mm. express disappointment. Focus on what they did well. And then don't make it about you. A lot of times when our teams don't perform, we take it personally. And so mm. now we're kind of mad at them. Like, how dare that <laughs> person? I gave them every resource or I was really clear about the steps and that they mm. should have come to me or whatever, right? You have nothing to protect or defend. And what we need to do is to instead be curious, uh, really understand mm -hmm. what's going wrong and motivate the person by asking them questions to come up with their own performance improvement plan. So ah, you can wonderful. Say, okay. Like, how do you think we could do this better next time? Or what resources do you think you need? How can I support you to help you do better? Because now that person is creating their own accountability plan. Mm -hmm. And it's coming from them, not from a blame and shame kind of 
meeting with you where you tried to force things on them that are going to feel like disciplinary measures. Right. So absolutely. Mm -hmm. It feels a lot more positive. And that's just a really critical thing. And, you know, sometimes when we have hard talks, people do get angry and they do try to project onto you. And remember, nothing to protect or defend. Don't take it personally. Turn it around and you can say, what's going on that you're so frustrated? How can mm -hmm. we help you? You know, and, and again, keep asking those questions. And then finally, the last thing that's really important is to ask if you can give advice. So oh. often we just feel like we should give somebody advice if we've been in their shoes or if we can clearly see, at least in our minds, how they could do it better. But if we don't ask, we don't know if they're receiving it. Mm -hmm. And it can feel a lot like a lecture. And I think I'm taking not... that as a parent <laughs> as yeah. well, yeah. Uh, you know, and to be able to, what I'm hearing in this description here is you're really empowering the person to kind of come up with their own solutions. And then you are there to provide some suggestions if they're open to it. That sounds like such an empowering and encouraging kind of conversation to have. Right. And it, it takes that hard talk and turns it into an opportunity for growth and an opportunity also for you as a leader to get more insight into mm -hmm. this person as an individual so that you can lead them better because now you know more about where they need help, where they might need more training, what tasks they're best suited for. And it really is a more productive thing. And again, really fosters that psychological safety that is going to help people show up as their best selves as mm -hmm. part of your team. Oh, I love it. And this is exactly the how to guide that we need, right? Especially going into a more of a complex conversation to be able to follow a bit of a roadmap like this, Angela, is super powerful. So I've been taking lots of notes for myself and also for, you know, for the summit pieces. Um, so I'm just wondering if there's any other actionable takeaway that you want to add before we close out today. Yeah, I think just always ask, how can I? You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times we can very much feel ourselves stressed out, frustrated, like if it isn't working the way that I thought it should, <laughs> it went wrong. These people are <laughs> wrong. And instead, let's just pivot that and say, how can I figure this out? And that alone tells your brain to think differently. So instead of ruminating about what you're unhappy with, Mm -hmm. You are looking for a solution to the problem. Oh, I love that. And that could be its own talk all on its own, I think. But oh, yeah. great kind of kind of um, closing piece when you're, we're looking at this theme today. So Angela, I know people are going to want to find out more about your work. You've got your podcast and everything. You want to tell us where we can find you and I'll link everything below. Absolutely. So the podcast is called <laughs> Architecting and you may want to put my name in when you Google it too, because there's some other similarly named podcasts. So if you put it in that way, but it is available anywhere that you like to listen to podcasts, including the YouTube channel. So that for, I do about 20% of the episodes are interviews and those have video. And there's also some great bonus content and some shorts on the YouTube channel. So definitely Fine. go and check that out. But my website is architectingpodcast.com. And this is really a community. And the whole idea behind it is to support you in doing the work that you feel you were meant to do and to dream big and to show you how to get past the roadblocks that often we put in our own way. So there's great free resources you can download there. There are classes I offer that you can take. And there's also, I offer a session called Saluted Genesis for Your Soul, which it's actually a workshop that I will do either for your business or your group 
where we talk about this whole idea of stress and how to plan our lifestyles and our careers in a different way to really have that stress reset so we can show up as our best selves. Oh, I think we all need that. Angela, we'll have to maybe have you back and talk about that another time as well. Um, But I'd like you for a second to speak about the content on your podcast, because I know it says architecting, and I know you have a lot of architecture community industry people within your community, but I also don't see it as only for architects, right? So I want to kind of maybe open that up, if you can explain that a bit. Mm -hmm. No, thanks for asking. So we deal with a lot of things that frankly, come up in creative careers and any career, you know, when I say creative career, a lot of people are thinking, well, I don't work in fine arts. Mm -hmm. If you work in business, you're probably still having to do a lot of creative stuff. And we get in our own way so often. So I talk about some very specific things like how we can feel more comfortable challenging ourselves and cultivating our growth and evolution, how we can deal with things like being angry at work Mm -hmm. and channel that more effectively, how we can leverage conferences. I've got a few Mm -hmm. episodes that are really great resources, especially if you're an introvert like me and you want to go to a conference, but you always feel awkward and don't know how to really get the most out of that experience. I've got episodes about things like that. I've got a whole series actually for introverts. So you can search the topics and there's lots of great resources in there. And Some of the people that I've interviewed over the years as well are just tremendous resources for how to be a high performing leader. So there's Mm -hmm. just a lot of great episodes. There's close to 250 now. So congratulations to choose from. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that we didn't lose people because of that, that, um, the title, because I know I, I've loved every single podcast that I've heard of yours uh, for me as a leader. Um, oh, so you. yeah, it's been amazing. So I know you also have a gift for folks you'd like to offer as well. So people want to sure. follow more. Mm-hmm. So it's called Get More from Your Daily 24. And what it is, is 24 different resources that you can use. And I've got them broken out to four different segments of your day. So there's six tips to do in the morning to kind of help you get the best start and afternoon and late afternoon and evening so that no matter where you are in your day, you can find something. You don't have to do all of them, but the idea is you've got choices and you can Mm -hmm. customize what you do based on the kind of day you're having or the kind of day you expect to have that really do help to get you in the right mindset, give you maybe a little bit of a reframe prompt Mm -hmm. so Mm -hmm. that you can really be the most effective leader. And most of all, be excited about what you're doing, not going, great, this again, or, oh, Mm -hmm. I don't know how I'm going to make it through this day, or I'm terrified of this meeting. I don't feel prepared. You know, all those things that create stress. Mm -hmm. So this is a really great set of tips. Um, As you know, Sarah, you wrote the foreword to my last book, which is called Time Builder. And it's a couple of years old now, actually, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. But um, a lot of these tips come out of the research that went into that. So that's a a really great supplementary resource if you enjoyed looking at this freebie, then definitely check out the book. Absolutely. And I highly recommend that as well. So maybe we can add that on if I remember to put the link there and uh, people can check it out or they can find it on your website, of course. So thank you so much, Angela. This is wonderful. I I, I have to go download that daily 24 um, guide myself because I'm always ready and open for more tips and how to show up as our best selves. So thank you, Angela. This has been amazing. I know everybody's going to really love it and um, they can explore more with you at the links that we'll put below the video. So thanks for being here today. Thank you.